Okay. Hope everybody can hear me. So today's lesson is going to be called The Truth and Lies. And what this topic is uh, about, um, things that are being taught in um, not only Christianity, but in all these uh, black power uh, movement groups or whatever, um, like uh, the Panthers when they discredit the scriptures. Uh, the comedic community, they, they discredit the scriptures. Christians, they twist the scriptures. You know, and uh, all these other different um, ideologies and religions or whatever that's out here. And um, what they do with the word of God. Even when it comes to keeping us keeping the laws and um, the land that we held captive and to clear some things um, to clear some things that may be floating around out there but before we start one thing uh, must be said and that is those that uh, are in camps or came from camps or that um look at these leaders as um, they're the ones that should be judging you or whatever the case may be. Listen, and in order to judge someone, you have to be upright and standing as Christ was. And I know that none of us are um, even close to that point of our lives. And um, yes, we should get sound counsel from um, a lot of um, those that are leaders. But as leaders, as leaders, you have to be upstanding as well to in order to judge those that are in your congregation on any matter. If that's not happening, then therefore you have one respect the persons and two um you can't rightfully judge when you can't take care of matters um when it's concerning your own household we're going to get we're going to get into that later because there's plenty of scripture and you know i always go to the examples of what was left in the scriptures of um, those that were leading us when they did not have respect to persons and they didn't judge those of their own family or their own friends or whatever the case may be and let things just run amok but anyone else they give them the business we're not going to do that here because this is not a camp number one and number two uh, we're going to teach the word of the Lord, precept upon precept, just as is written in the scriptures. So to start this class, we're going to go to the book of Acts chapter 5. Remember the subject, the truth and lies. So the book of Acts, in the New Testament, check chapter 5, and I'm going to start at verse... Um, Start at verse 17. <clears throat> and it says, Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the set of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation. So what we're talking about right now are the uh, the the prophets or the, the disciples that were with Christ, that were teaching with Christ. This this is what we're you know, going into right now. And the disciples, they were um, being questioned 
by the Sadducees. Okay, so listen, and I'll explain this all to you. In verse 18, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. So when the scriptures say to lay their hands on them, that means they, they fought them, they beat them up. Okay, listen up. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, go and stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came and they that were with him and called the council together and all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them bought. But when the officer came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety. So what they're saying is they returned back to the prison to find that the, the prison, all the prisoners were gone. The people, that the, the Israelites that they locked up, they were no longer there. They were gone. So now they're saying they, they, they locked it all up with all the safeties. All the safeties are all the locks that they use to, to lock the prison up, to secure, secure the prison, right? And then it says, and the keepers standing without before the door, but when we had opened, we found no man within. So they're saying that the, the, the prison um, guards or correction officers, whatever you want to call them, saying that they, they were there. They were there, and these people were gone, and nobody saw them. Leave. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they doubted of them, whereunto this would grow. So they, they, they wanted to tell the, the people when they was telling what happened or what was going down, they told them. Basically, act like this never happened. Same thing they did with Christ when he came, um, rose again, like he said he would. They did the same thing here. Act as if this didn't happen so they wouldn't, you know, get out to the people saying, oh, oh these people really are from um, the Most High. So verse 25, then it says, Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence. So they didn't have to fight them to get them back to go back to the, uh, the prison. Listen up. And brought them without violence for they feared the people. Lest they should have been stoned. And when they had bought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? Saying that they should not teach in, in the name of Christ. Okay? This was the commandment of the land. This is the law of the land, that they cannot teach in the name of the Messiah. Okay? So, um, we have verse um, 28, I mean 27 again. And when they had bought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intended to bring the man's blood upon us. So now, being that the doctrine was coming out, no different than what's actually happening today. Okay? Being that the doctrine is coming out, they're being, the people are being taught 
what Christ needed to be taught, the same as what was being done on the earth right now. Okay. Now, verse 29 is the reason why I came to this scripture. I wanted you to see what the whole story was about instead of just giving you the verse and just, and just stop it right there. But verse 29, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. That was the whole purpose why I went through all of that. Reason being, there are laws of the land that we have to follow. But when those laws contradict the most high, like we did in class last um, Sabbath, and I spoke to you all and taught on the sister and her seven sons being tortured for eating pork. But the lesson also within that lesson was the fact that the law of the land was for them to break God's law and follow behind their law. They chose death. The same thing as the brother. For him to fake the funk and act as if he's eating unclean meat when he's eating clean meat, but he didn't want those men that were watching to think that he was eating unclean meat. So just to say that, so they'll do it and break the laws of the most high. He refused to do it and they tortured him for their deceit is falsehood. Okay. Thou put us away all the wicked of the earth like droves. Therefore, I love thy testimonies. Verse 120. This is where I want to get to. My flesh trembled for the fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. Verse 121. I have done judgment and justice. Leave me not to my oppressors. Back to 120 again. My flesh trembled. For the fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. Do you understand that? When King David said and wrote this, that I am afraid of my judgments, of thou judgments, the most high's judgments, and we worried about man's law. Or we are here trying to circumvent the most high's laws. To benefit us or in Christianity and, and um, uh, Christianity, um, um, comedic community or whatever those cases, they don't have, they, they don't want discipline. They don't want discipline and Christianity say that the laws of God can't be, can't be done. And in the comedic community, they, they just don't want to have no laws because they want to go out there and do the things that they're doing. You know, men with men, women with women, all kind of craziness that they got going on. They want to continue to do those things. All the wickedness that they're doing. As if they're helping the people. None. They're not doing the doggone thing. That's the reason why we're in the mess we're in right now. Okay? So you have to fear the Lord. Period. Let's... Um, right there, still in Psalms 119. Let's get um, let's go over to verse 93 in Psalms 119. I will never forget thy precepts for them thou hast quickened me. So this is what's so important about the scriptures. It's because when we go in the scripts and I show you precept upon precept, what these laws mean, what the stories that um, our forefathers have written for, these are actual events that took place so that we won't make the mistakes that our ancestors made. Or we know what's coming if we do those things. Verse 94, I am thou, save me. 
for I have sought thy precepts. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me, but I will consider thy testimonies. I have seen an end of all perfection, but the commandment is exceedingly broad. Verse 97. We're in Psalms 119 and verse 97. Oh, how love I the law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou, through thy commandments, have made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. Verse 99. I have more understanding than them, than all of my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditations. So when King David said I had more understanding than all of my teachers, because up to the point that King David was walking the earth, everything that he learned from the teachers, he knew, he understood, and he actually did it in the midst of even his own sin. He was able to do what he had to do, overcome, repent, and come out of that thing and do what he had to do. The most high is who judged King David. But he did what he had to do to get himself back on track, which we went into that last week also. But we have an advantage over all the prophets in the scriptures. And the advantage that we have is we got the finished, we got the finished product. We got the finished product book we know there is no in private interpretation of what the scriptures say and people always searching the scriptures trying to circumvent the most high laws so they can do whatever it is that they want to do the sin I'm telling you none of us are above his wrath none of us if you don't repent He's going to kill you. Bottom line. Verse 100. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments for thou hast taught me because that's what the judgments do. When you go through something in this walk, and whether it be the camp leader or the most high or both that judge you on the matter or whatever it is that you did uh, wrong, if whatever was done doesn't change your train of thought, then you don't fear the most. You don't fear the most high. You think you can keep on doing whatever you're doing, but if it changes your chain of thought, and now you understand the most high. Number one, he had favor with you. Number two, he ain't playing with you. He ain't playing with you. At that point in your life is when you got to realize. Now you got to give it all up to him. You got to give it all up to him. Every single thing. And live for his honor. And serve the Lord. By keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. The best of your ability. Living in this captivity. And verse 103. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. So with that, we're going to go over to the book of Romans to get the understanding Of Romans chapter 13. <clears throat> so the book of Romans chapter 13. 
Let every soul be subject unto the higher power. For there is no power but of God. The power, the powers that be are ordained of God. So what this means is this. Let every soul be subject unto the higher power. The higher power that is speaking to in, in this um, understanding is those that are over us, like the president, like the governors, like the mayors. They over us. They over us because you already know we sin before the most high. He placed our enemies over us. Okay. For there is no power but of God. So that means that if they in power, he put them near. You understand? He put them near. Whether they're there to help us or afflict us, whatever the case may be, they're there because he put them there for a reason. Okay? The powers that he, that be, are ordained by God. Meaning he gave them the, the power to reign over us. Verse two, whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God. So that don't mean because it says that whosoever resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God. That doesn't mean that the, if the power tells you to eat pork or the power tells you to profane the Sabbath or whatever the case may be, that don't mean you go do it because the power who's in charge are over us, who we paying tribute to tribute is taxes. That doesn't mean that you, you go break God's laws. Man laws never go before the most high laws. If you throw a piece of paper out the window while you driving, that's not a sin. Okay, it's not a sin. We are in the land of our captivities. The most I set this thing up real nice for us. What I mean by that? We have freedom of speech. Don't we? If we didn't have it, it's no way in the world for his word to get out to the people. We got the YouTube. We got the uh, uh, Periscope. Conference calling. We get out on the streets and teach. In the hedges and the highways. And we pr protect it under the very same laws that our enemies put in place. We also using them to protect us from them trying to stop us from doing what it is that we're doing. But at no time do you keep man's law and disregard the most high law. You break man's law. Like me and the sister was talking about earlier, you got to pay whatever the circumstances is for you breaking the law. If the speed limit say 65 and you're doing 75 and you get stopped and pull over by the, by the man and he writes you a ticket and you go to court and the judge says you got to pay this amount of money for doing 10 miles over the speed limit, then that's what you got to do. Why are you fighting something that you actually was doing? You broke the law. You got to pay the you got to pay the price. But that's the law of the land. That's the top part of what we read in Romans chapter 13 and verse 1. But if man law says that you must eat the pork are we going to write you a summons or worse, kill you? Now, 
You got to make a decision what you're going to do. Some of us, that ain't even a decision to make. You might as well just kill me, man. I'm not taking no more chances of dealing with the most high and his judgments because anybody can take away this physical being that we are. This flesh that we in, anybody can in our lives. And this physical us be gone no more. But your soul, see, man can't touch that. Only the most high can do that. And when he killed that, you are truly dead. You dead to him. But you will be alive in the lake of fire forever. Tormented and torture forever. Why in the hell would you want that for yourself? Why? Why would you want that for yourself? Because people out there want to, men want to be with men, out there sword fighting, women want to be with women, out there messing with other people's wives or messing with other people's husbands that's of your people, up there mistreating your people. Just sinning left and right, just doing whatever, just adding sin on top of sin. Why in the world would you want to put yourself through that situation? Why? Why would you want to do that? If man lost, say, drive 65 miles an hour, and you cheat a little bit, and you're doing 75, and he stop you or don't stop you, However it may be. But the most high, the man ain't stop you because either one, you wasn't going fast enough for him to want to come out and stop you. Or two, he ain't see you. But when we break most high laws, he sees everything, all that we doing. I'm telling you, he see it all. If he love you and bring it out, now, matter of fact, let me back that up. If he bring bring it out, your wickedness, what you doing, and he bring it out, that's because he love you. Because some people, they die in their sin. Some of us, Israelites, we die in our sin. Could be car crash, could be gunshot, could just be dropped dead and everything healthy about this person. All of those things. That's all judgment. That's all judgment. So verse two again, whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God and they that resist shall receive themselves damnation. So, we talk when we say resisted the ordinance, resisted also uh, that of the Most High. Okay, like I said, throwing a piece of paper out the window while you're driving, that ain't no sin because that's man law. You ain't going against what the Most High said. Most High don't care about no paper getting thrown out the window. Yeah, we got to observe the laws of the land. And a lot of the laws that we Israelites cannot really keep because we're in captivity. To give you an example of what I'm talking about. Because in no way, fashion of uh, uh, sound, am I telling anyone that, oh, well, we can we can just break all God's laws because we can't really rightfully do 
Some of them. So that that just gives us a ticket to just do whatever we want to do. Well, all of them. Okay. That's what you think. I'm going to show you otherwise. So let me get this particular law that I want to talk about. Um, um, one second. second oh, I'm looking for that precept Well, I'm looking for that precept. I'm, I'll be looking for it, and at the same time, that's why I need more men around to help me out with these things. And um, be able to pull these things up for me while I'm, I'm teaching at the same time. But at verse 3, it says, um, and I'm still doing the, pulling this up because I want to show you this law in Leviticus. But um, in verse 3, it says, For rulers are not terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of thy power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. So the most I say, do what's good, and he had praise of the same. So we do good, that means we doing good of his laws. And most of the most of the time doing good and his laws are doing his laws. We pretty much be in line with man laws. Like, for instance, man law says that um, if you marry to more than one woman. Right. That's um, what they call it. Um. Oh man, I forgot the name of it. Um, it'll come to me. You can't be married to two women at the same time in man's law right now. You can't do that. The same thing the most high law says, you can't do that either. Yeah, polygamy. That's right. Thank you, sis. Sister Sonia. Polygamy. You can't do it. In man's law, you cannot be married to two women at the same time. You can't do it. Two, three, I don't care what it is. You can't be married to more than one woman. That's it. That's the man's law. That ain't the like we were following the, the law of the land. That was God's law before man made it a law. Where do you think man got the law from? He got the laws from the most high. Everything that these people do. They get it from us. And then they turn around and do it better than you do. That's what's crazy. That's what's crazy. I was, you know, talking to an uh, individual this Friday. Right? And um, on Fridays at work, most of the time, I don't really have to go out in these streets. I don't have to hit the streets and go out. So, I have my little time to myself where, you know, I can do whatever it is that I want to do. So, the majority of that time, I'm in the scripts. I'm listening to my truth music. I'm in the scripts. I got my little Bluetooth speaker or whatever, and I'm listening to my music. I share the office with this individual. So they come in, right? They change my music and put their 
Lil Wayne on. And this this is a a, a, a Judite, no, a Benjamite woman at that. But young. She put Lil Wayne on, listening to Lil Wayne, talking about hoes and bees and this and that and D's going here and doing all this oh man all this all this craziness right and she dancing and moving and all kind of stuff and I said you rather be called that and be spoke about like that Then to hear the most high word and, and these brothers bringing out the scripts and, and teaching you how to get salvation. That's what you'd rather do? You know what she said? You only live once. I said, yeah. Well, guess what? Newsflash. You're going to be judged for that. And when the most high hit the DVR button on your behind and rewind back your life and play what you just said in slow motion. After he push you down in the lake of fire, then you're going to realize you live more than once. You got a second life, which is your soul that you're trying to save. And you'd rather be spoke to like this than to be spoke to like a woman and you wonder why you ain't got no man or can't keep one. Or a man that ain't got no woman or can't keep one. It's because of that mentality in your mind. Our people's minds are destroyed. Their minds are gone. It makes no sense how our people mindset, how they think. You bring out the scripts, they they huffing and puffing, roll their eyes, all kind of stuff. But when the most high cracked that sky, goodness gracious, it's gonna be gnashing of the teeth. It's too late. Grace is over. Grace is over. I'm looking for this scripture. I don't know why I can't find it right now. But if anybody come across it, it's it's the law that was in Leviticus or Exodus where um, you couldn't mix textiles or cotton. That's the one I'm looking for. I'm looking for that script. So if somebody come across it, just shoot it across the screen, um, text it to me or whatever, and then I go to it and it's explain the scripture and then show you why we can't keep that law. Okay, if anybody come across it. Anyway, verse four says, For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of good, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Well, we know the people that set over us right now, they ain't none of them set up for that. Okay? None of them are set up for that. None of these leaders. Listen. All you need to do is worry about Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. That is your main focus. To fear the Lord and keep his commandments. All those that we know that we can do. Being I can't find that scripture and, and nobody posted it up yet. But this is what the basis of the scripture is saying. You can't mix... Um, Textiles, cotton wood, wool, or some uh, something of the sort. That's what the scriptures say. Okay. Why you can't keep that law? Simple. 
Do we own our own textile companies? No, we don't. We don't own our own textile companies, so there's no way for us to dictate what they do or how they make our shirts and clothes that we wear on our backsides. It's nothing that we have that we could do that with. Nothing. We don't own anything. Thank you, sis. Let me try that. Let me see if that's it. Deuteronomy 22. Yeah. And leave Leviticus 19. Let me see. Leviticus. Okay, yeah, that's it. Um, 19 and 19. Deuteronomy 22. 11, I think it was. Yep. Deuteronomy 22 and 11 and Leviticus 19 and 19. That's it. Both of them. All praises. Thank you. So we get the law in Leviticus first, 19 and 19. And the scripture says, ye shall keep my statutes. Thou shall not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. Thou shall not sow the field with mingled seed. Neither shall a garment mingle of linen and wool come upon thee. Right? So we go to. Um, Deuteronomy 22 and verse 11 and it says um, thou shalt not wear a garment of divers sort as wool woolen and linen together okay so that law is a law that was then as a people we had our own textile we made our own clothes we had our own livestock, everything. Well, we can control what we do and don't do. You understand? So, therefore, if somebody tried to do something different back then, it was because they were trying to preserve what they have or, or get more garments out of um, who knows what their mindset is. Okay? Who knows what their mindset was? But the fact is, that's what was done back then because we had control of the market that sold the textiles. You don't have that control now. So we go buy a shirt in the store. Are you going to stand up there all day long looking at the tag of the shirt, trying to figure out what it's made out of? You ain't going to be able to find the combinations uh, or the things that we need to wear or what. You ain't going to find that. You might as well walk around butt naked because you ain't going to find it. You're not going to find it. So what you have to understand is, like me and the sister was talking earlier, this is part of the grace that the Most High give us because it, there are things and there are laws that the most high know that you can't you can't keep. He put you here so he knows what you can do and what you can't do. He gives us the free reign. Don't think for one minute that man made it where um we can broadcast our teachings and our understanding and our thoughts of these scriptures across the, the um across the globe without no repercussions, don't think that the man just felt good one day and woke up and said, yeah, we're going to let him do this. That's not what happened. The Most High orchestrated that thing to go down the way it went down. That's why when we read Genesis 49, we're talking about the tribe of Judah that said our, our, our foot was in the neck of the enemy. 
That was doing all those civil rights marches. Foot was in the neck of the enemy. When some certain laws were changed for us to be able to operate the way we're operating now. But the man, he let you know that you ain't totally got control. We're going to put a hand on you, Negroes. How you do that? The Voters' Right Act. Every 25 years, you got to be voted on for you to vote. The right for Negroes to vote. Every 25 years, that got to be... And I got to come before, you know, they write a bill again. It goes through the entire process. It goes into the House of Representatives and be voted on. Yes or no. Then it goes to the Congress and be voted on. Yes or no. Then it comes before the president. And he's going to say yes or he's going to say no. Don't you know that at any given time, they can say no. The majority rule can say no. Negroes can't vote no more. Don't you know they can do that? They can do that. So what makes you think you're free in a country that can stop you from voting? Not that we do it anyway, but the fact is that they can stop you from doing it. They can stop you from doing it. But when we obey man's law, we obey man's law for as our highway laws, the same as the man's law said thou should not, uh, the most high said thou should not commit murder. You understand? Uh, well, man's law, you can't commit murder either. It, the law say you can't have um, adultery. Man's law say you can't have adultery either. Now the most high said that you can't have uh uh, graven image. Man law don't say that. They got graven image all over the place. Everywhere. And the people that walk around with. Um, with um, crucifixes on their necks. And the whole, they in sin. They in a midst of sin. They in a midst of sin. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 18 says, What profited the graven image that makers thereof have graven it? The molten image and the teacher of lies. Because that's what it did. One, you got Caesar Boger on the front. Two, it's doing everything it can to pull you away from the most high laws. All of these things are set up by man. Man set up these, these um, most of his laws to contradict what the scriptures say. We are here every day in this truth and we keeping the most high laws. That's um, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 18. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 18. The scripture I just um, I just read. My fault. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 18. But like I was saying, these things are met, uh, set up to cause us to break the most high laws. Then people try to make us um, feel like we are... Um, we are lame or whatever the case may be. You ain't cool no more. You ain't this, you ain't that or whatever, because now you choose not to um, go shopping on the Sabbath day. That's the most high law. 
because you choose not to cook on the Sabbath day or clean on the Sabbath day. We're going to keep God's laws. That's the whole point. Your friendships need to be with people that want to keep God's laws too. You got people out here that say that they love the Lord. Right? But they will keep not one part of his laws. And see, what's crazy is Isaiah had already prophesied about this thing. And I showed you last week how the Messiah, the Messiah was teaching in synagogues on the Sabbath day, like we teach now, the Old Testament. And he was teaching the book of Isaiah. If you look, search the scriptures and start reading and start um um, looking at what the other prophets was teaching to one to another or to our people, especially in the New Testament, most of the time they were learning from the prophet of Isaiah. He is the one prophet that the majority of the teachers that we've been learning was coming from. Don't take my word for it. Go to the scripts and look for yourself. So the prophet Isaiah said, um, when, and Christ and Mark turn around and, 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 and Paul too, and quoted the same thing. May have been in their words a little different, but it was the same, it was speaking the same thing that the prophet Isaiah was speaking. When he said, um, you know, that we speak with our tongue, right? Lord, Lord. And, but we don't keep none of the commandments of the most high. With um, the scripture says we honor, and I'm going to go to every precept in the New Testament where he said that. But I want to want to show you where it originated from. Where they get it from. So we're going to go to the book of Isaiah chapter 29. And verse 13. And this is where you're going to see what Paul, Christ, uh, Mark, all the disciples Got this from. So the book of Isaiah chapter 29 verse 13 says, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth. That's what the people do. They all talk about, oh, I love the Lord. The Lord this. The Lord praise me. The Lord bless me with this. Thank God. Man, every time I see something on Facebook or out here in the world and the people say uh, somebody's son or daughter could have been in a car crash or whatever the case may be. And you know, they ain't keeping commandment one, but their lives are spared and the car will mingle up and crashed up or whatever the case may be. And they say, Oh, the Lord is good. This and that blah, blah, blah. And won't keep not one law. Thanksgiving. Oh my goodness. Won't do nothing. The Lord say nothing. And you say the Lord is good. And you don't do nothing to show him how good he is. Or how great he is. So the scriptures say, Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips, they do honor me but have removed their hearts, the heart meaning the mind, far from me, and their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men. Let 
let me explain something to you. I can I can talk about myself. When I was really young, I've been in the scriptures since I was seven years old. I never read in the, in the scriptures when I was like eight, nine, or whatever to fear God. I never I never um actually came across it at that age. Ten, whatever. I never came across it at that age. I learned to fear the Lord because my mama told me to fear God. My grandfather told me to fear God. My dad told me to fear the Lord. Everybody told me to fear the Lord, but I never saw my own two eyes. I saw my own two eyes. I was probably 16 when I read it. Now, I was reading the book of Leviticus, uh, the book of Exodus. I was reading the Bible like you read a novel. So I didn't know how to uh, do precept upon precept. I didn't know how to do that. But at that young age, I was reading the scriptures and what the scriptures say. Okay. I was only eight, nine years old when I was understanding what I was reading. In the book of Leviticus, when it says, graven image, don't make no marks on your body. I knew what that meant. That's why I got not one tattoo on me. Not one. Not one. I knew what it meant then. So people can't tell me that they don't know or what the scriptures say. They lying. They know what the scriptures say. They know what the scripture is saying. So now we just read what the prophets were saying in Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13, where they were getting it from. Then, like they like they tell us. They tell us that the, the new the Old Testament is done away with in Christianity. Hold on, Periscope. I see that the thing stopped. Let me um get it going. One second. Let me back on now. So The scripture says um, that we read in De um, Isaiah 29. Then we go and then the people tell us that the, the, the laws of the Most High done away with, right? And then we go to the New Testament and see that everything that was being quoted that the, that the prophets were um, Quoting in the New Testament came from the Old Testament. So we go to um, the book of Matthew, chapter 15. And we're going to start at verse 8. Okay. The book of Matthew, chapter, chapter 15, and verse 8 says, This people draw nigh. Unto me with their mouth. Now this is the Messiah speaking now. This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth. And honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. It ain't the exact same thing that Isaiah said. But it's the exact same thing. That's why precept must be upon precept. It means the same exact thing. It means the same thing. And when the scriptures say, um, but their hearts is far from me. I, I need the people to know that those that are new in this truth, 
that um, when the Lord is talking about our hearts, he ain't talking about that heart that's pumping blood in your, um, pumping blood throughout your body. Let's go to the book of Mark chapter 7 and verse 21. The book of Mark chapter 7 verse 21. And the scripture says, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. So your heart, that muscle in your chest, pumping blood, that don't think, that don't do no thinking. What does the thinking is your mind, your brain. Is what do the thinking. So when he referring to your heart. He's referring to your mind. So you know. Put that in your mental notes. Mark chapter 7 verse 21. For from within. Out of the heart of men. Proceed evil thoughts. Okay. So now. Back to Matthews. Chapter 8. And verse 15. Is that where I was? Uh, eight. Where was I? I mean, I had it backwards. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 8. My fault. So it says again this people. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 8. This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So that's the same thing that the prophet Isaiah said, okay? But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. The commandment of men is... We don't got to keep the high holy days of the most high because we got grace. We don't got to keep dietary laws because we got grace. Uh, we don't have to keep the Sabbath day because we got grace. Well, let's find out what grace do before we keep on saying because we got grace. You got to know how to deal with people that say these things. So let's find out what grace, what it really does. Then I'm going to put it into terms today. So with that, we're going to go to the book of Titus. The book of, um, hold on, let me get it. Book of Titus, chapter 2. And I'm going to start at verse 11. So the scripture says, the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 11. Scripture says, for the grace of God. And I'm going to go all the way down in the scripture because, you know, um, you got some um, people that try to get you twisted up in this scripture, especially in the beginning. Especially in the beginning, but I'm going to show you further down as we read. This grace only pertains to the children of Israel. Anyway, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation. So the grace of God that brings salvation. We know salvation is us being saved from this present world that we living in. Right? Being brought back on them chariots. And being able to get the kingdom. That's what we know. For the grace of God that bring us salvation have appeared to all men. So they read that. They think it's okay. This is for everybody. Okay. So, the, okay, for right now, we're going to say it's for everybody. But we're going to see what the rest of us say. That's why precept must be upon precept. Teaching us. Wait a minute. 
verse 12 just said grace is teaching us. I know ain't no typo in my scripture, but that's what it just said. It's teaching us. So in order to teach you something, it's got to be something to be taught. And ain't no grace just to be sitting out here and saying, okay, um, I'm going to just do all kind of sin. And we good. The scripture says that grace of God that bring of salvation have appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world. Well, to deny ungodliness means that you refrain from sin. To deny worldly lust means that you refrain from sin. And it says in this present world, that means the world you're living in right now. That's what it means. Looking for that blessed hope. That blessed hope is the, the return of the Messiah. And the glorious appearing in the great of God and our Savior, the Messiah called Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. Iniquity is sin. So we know sin, 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, is the transgression of the law. So therefore you transgress the law, you commit sin. We know that. We know that Psalms 119, uh, um, Psalms 140, 147, verse 19 and 20, tells us that the laws were only given to the children of Israel, no other nation. So therefore only you can sin and be punished for them, okay? And purify unto himself a peculiar people. Whoa. So at the top, it says appear to all men. Now we get down here in verse 14. It says, and purify. Purify means to cleanse. Make pure unto himself. Possess a pronoun. A peculiar people. So who was called peculiar people? A peculiar people? What's this talking about? What is the Lord talking about? Well, let's find out. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 14. We're going to hit a lot of precepts on this one. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 14. And we start at verse one. Because we know the book of Deuteronomy is talking to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy one and one. Right or wrong? Yes. Right. We know that. So the scriptures say, ye are the children of the Lord, your God. Ye shall not cut yourselves, nor make any boldness between your eyes for the dead. For thou art a holy people unto the, unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord had chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself. That's in the Old Testament. Now we get to the New Testament and read in Titus. Chapter 2, verse 11, and verse 14 say, Who gave himself for us, for us, the children of Israel, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, from all sin, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, which is also talking about us. Then the rest of the scripture says, zealous of good works, 
These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority, correct with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Let no man make you sin. That's what it means. Let no man make you sin. So yes, we are to abide by the laws of the land. But when they start to contradict the most high laws, then you got a decision to make. We got our friends, we got our families, so on and so forth. We have this. But when their thoughts of whatever they want to do starts to contradict what the most High said for us to do. Then don't do it. Trust me, we're going to lose friends in this walk. Sometimes they're going to come back and get on board. And sometimes they're going to be gone in the wind. And, and you probably won't even speak to them again. Sometimes those people could be the closest to us. They could be the closest to us. But at the end times, and when Christ come, listen, that's the time I'm telling you when the selfishness is going to kick in. Because when, when I say selfishness, I'm not telling you don't share with your brothers and sisters. I'm, I want you to tell them the gospel, the good news. Either they're going to hear it or they're going to forbear. But at the same time, you got to understand something. Your salvation is only belonging to you. Let's get that in Philippians. The book of Philippians chapter 2. Now, we read in Psalms chapter 119 and verse 20. Right? I'm going to just refresh you. You don't got to go to it, but I'm just going to refresh your memory real quick. What it said. The book of Psalms chapter 119 and verse 120 says, my flesh trembles. When people tremble, that's because they're afraid. My flesh tremble for the fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. Okay. So Philippians chapter two and verse 12 says, wherefore my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. So what the scripture is saying the, uh, the Messiah, beloved is Israel, as ye have always obeyed, did what the Most High said do in my presence, you know, while I walk here on the earth. But now much more, meaning now that the Messiah is gone, that we are more to keep, the, keep his laws, and especially us, the children of Israel now, having to come from nothing, not knowing nothing, not even knowing this book is for us, to now knowing this book is all about us, and now we're keeping God's most, uh, the most high laws. Trust me, nobody got the perfect doctrine. Nobody got it, because we had to learn who we were first. And then once we learned who we were, then we had to learn and get the understanding of what the scripture is saying. We real close. But we ain't perfect. 
That's the Messiah's job. That's his job. When he gather us together, before we ever, ever meet the most high, before we ever meet the most high, when we was talking about in grace to be purified, that's what the Messiah got to do to us. He has to purify us. Because before we go before the most high, we have to be cleansed. I mean, super cleansed. Clorox cleansed. Not a drop of sin. That's the phase we got to go through, people. And Christ is going to be the one that get us in order. And those that don't want to do it then, even in the kingdom, your ass is going to be put to death. Ain't going to be no playing around. Ain't going to be no, um, well, let's put them in the ward like they did with the brother in Numbers chapter 15. Um, when he when he um, picking up the sticks while we were in fringes today. The most high said, kill him. But ain't gonna be no putting in the, in the ward until the most high make it. Christ going to kill you. Them angels, they're gonna kill. Listen, listen, let me get you something. Let me let me give you an understanding of something about the most high. Okay. About angels and Christ. First of all, Christ is an austere man. That's number one. And he said he ain't coming back as a man like he was before. He's going to be in all his glory. Number two, them angels, one angel by himself can destroy this whole earth. So what you think he could do to you? One, just one. He coming with a host of them. So it would behoove you to get in these scriptures and read and listen to these classes and be taught and understand what we read in, in, in um, Psalms 119 verse 120, my flesh trembles. For his judgments. And then we read in here in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my not as in my presence, but now more in my absence, fear and trembling. That fear and trembling comes from the fact that you know what the most high can do to you. Don't think that you're just gonna be. Kill and that's it. You gone. You are going to suffer forever. Forever. Your soul will no longer be among the people. That's why the scriptures say, don't fear him that can kill flesh. Fear him that can kill the soul. That's the most high. Only he can do that. Only he could do that. Verse 13. For it is good which is work in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And to do all his good pleasure. Listen, we have the Christianity teaches you got to have the faith of Christ and you get the kingdom. No. You got to have the faith of Christ and you got to do the will of the Lord. Period. That's how you get the kingdom. That's why I call this class the truth and lies. Because I want you to understand
is so many examples in the scriptures that show us number one, how the Most High was merciful. You have to understand the Most High had to add mercy onto himself to deal with us because we rebellious, hard-headed people. But he love you so much. That's why I don't get the I don't get it. He love you so much that he that he had to do something for himself, not more than once, a whole lot of times, to deal with our hard head assness. At some point in time, we gotta get the understanding and knowing, listen, the Lord then gave us chance after chance after chance. Even in the midst of our captivity, he's still been blessing us. He could have just said the heck with us and let us all die and be done away with. But he didn't do that. Because of his love for us. Just like your love is for your children. His love for his children the same way. But just like you as a parent. And you got a child that's always getting in trouble at school. And you get tired of going up to the school. Finally, you have to do something to discipline them. Finally, the most high had to do something to discipline us. The thing about it is we got to humble. We got to humble to the correction. And just do what the most high said. It ain't hard. It's not. It's not hard. That's why it's so important to always hinge on Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. You do that, I guarantee you will not go wrong in this walk. You won't. You won't go wrong. Because that's our whole job. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, I mean, chapter, um, yeah, chapter 12 and verse 13. And the scripture says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. When the scriptures, like I said before, the whole conclusion means the whole scripture from cover to cover. Our whole life, from birth to death, to fear God, keep the commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. The one thing we got is these laws. And not one person can tell me or show me that wherein as keeping these laws is detrimental to their health or their way of life. Everything here is set up to save your life, one, and two, to make your life live longer. We all made mistakes. But we got a way to minimize the mistakes that we make. It's right here in this book. It's right here. This is the word of the Lord. This is our history.
This is our history. And if we just do what it says do, then we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Now, I was going to go into the book of Daniel, um, chapter 1 and 2, but we're not going to have enough time to, to do it. So, um, I'll bring it back because it'll be the part two of this class. Because in the book of Daniel, chapter 1 and, and, uh, and chapter 2, the reason why I want to go there is because I want to show you during the time when they had Nebuchadnezzar in rulership, Nebuchadnezzar would have been like the president is here in this country. That's what Nebuchadnezzar would have been back during that time in Babylonia. When the um, when Daniel and the three holy children were residing there. And Nebuchadnezzar had laws set up in his land too. Laws for the people to follow. And those laws contradict the most high laws. They contradict the most high laws. Daniel and the three holy children didn't break those laws that the most high has set forth. And even here in this country, although a lot of things are set up for us to break the laws, but you still have free will to make a decision of you're going to do this or you're not going to do it. They may put all kind of um, uh, watch when it like Thanksgiving, Walmart last year. Walmart last year was showing all them commercials with Patty LaBelle and, and the sweet potato pie and that big old ham. Big old ham that she, that she was cooking or whatever the case may be. They showed that thing all last year. I don't even know what they showed this year. But the point is it. Our people, our people, um, they see this thing and they don't even, they don't even know that they're being coerced to commit sin. Now I was watching, um, this TV show yesterday and Wayne Brady, if anybody know who he is, Wayne Brady is a brother. He's funny, make a lot of jokes. He was saying that he couldn't do some opening he had to do because he had gout. He had got the gout. So he couldn't do whatever it is that he had to do some opening he had to because that gout is painful. You get that from eating foods like pork. I say that to say this. All these elements that we're dealing with today is from us not doing what the Most High say do. And him, a public, um, people, everybody know who he is, stopped him in his tracks. He couldn't even do nothing. And he said that he had for Thanksgiving honey glazed ham, turkey, um, steak, collard greens, ham hocks, all that stuff he said he had. And he said that ham like two, three times. Honey glazed ham. Then he said he got the gout. Then they asked him, well, knowing that you got the gout from eating them foods that you ate, would you do it again? Wayne Brady said, I got the gout, I know because I ate these foods, and so on and so forth, but yes, I would do it all over again. You choose to eat an abominable, uh, 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 an abominable thing over to keeping the most high laws and go through the pain that you go through for gout. Uh, from from having the gout, you willing to go through that pain just to satisfy your taste buds? 
you gone. Ain't nothing can be done to save you. But when we go to this history in the book of Daniel, because we're going to hit Daniel, you know, quite a bit, um, Lord's willing, on Wednesday. That won't have nothing to do with that class that's on, that question and answer that's on Wednesday, because uh, Sister brought up um, a heavy topic, and we're going to go into that thing in the book of Daniel. But the part two of this class, when I put it all, you know, the rest of it together, is definitely we're going to go into the book of Daniel, chapters one and two, what happened to the three holy children, and also what happened to Daniel, far as when it came to keeping the laws of the land and keeping the most high laws. We already went over to went over that in the Maccabees um, when it was dealing with this, the women, the, the woman and her seven sons and the brother keeping God's laws and not the law of the land when it contradicts the most high laws. I'm telling you this for a reason. Them times is going to come again. If you read the scriptures, you get un you'll get the full understanding that what happened then, it's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. And it's important that you know that. We can't we can't continue to keep thinking that we can't that we can do this thing by ourselves and that we cannot um that we're gonna be able to resist Satan. You know, Satan is a power in the earth. You understand? He's a power in the earth. He, yeah, he's um, made by the Most High, controlled by the Most High, can't do nothing unless the Most High allow him to do it. But that's the Most High. You ain't the Most High. So them rules don't apply to you. He can destroy your behind. This is how you fight him back. So back into Romans chapter 13. And we was at verse four. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he bear not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that do of evil. So what that scripture means is no different than what happened to us going into slavery. What's happening to us now? The same people that he that that he put over us, the same people he uh, have a point terror over us as well. The same people that's shooting up men down the street. This um Romans chapter 13 and verse four. It's the same thing. The same people that he put over us. They there to execute the wrath of the most high on us for our evil doings. Yet at the same time, it's there to teach us a lesson too. Yet at the same time, it's there to bring us together. Verse five, wherefore ye must needs to be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscious sake. So the most I was saying that he appointed this person over you, not only for the wrath of the most high, to do the things that they're doing to us 
for us, you know, um, and our iniquity, our sin to the most high, but also for our conscience sake, to say, to make you think and understand, stop cleaving to the enemy and come back to the most high. Your conscience should be telling you that. The people that, that especially our own people, that clave to the enemy and act as if these things that's happening to us on this earth is, is um, a figment of our imagination. It's just really not happening. It is really happening. It's really happening. So verse six says, for this cause, pay ye tribute also. So he's saying for this cause, we got to pay taxes to the same people that's oppressing us. For they are God's ministers and attending continually upon this very thing. Because it said is God's ministers. Yeah, the ministers to, uh, 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 um, to give us our affliction, not ministers unto the Lord as if they're his holy people. No, they instruments used to continuously punish us for not keeping the most high laws. Verse seven, render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, customs to, cust to whose custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Verse eight, and owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. That doesn't mean that we spoke of honor and fear the man that's oppressing us, that's talking about your brethren. That's talking about your brethren. But verse 11, you, that's where we want to get to. As a matter of fact, let me get to 10 first. Let me get 10 first. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. The love is fulfilling of the law. No different than what we read in 1 John chapter, um, chapter 5, verse 3. Verse 11. This is the most important part. And that knowing that time, that now, is high time. This is the time. This is the time. That is high time to awake out of sleep. And for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. It is nearer more than what we ever believed before. Because everything is falling in line right now, people. It's high time to wake up out of the slumber. We got to keep God's laws with fear and trembling. Period. Every day. Every day. Every single day. And with that, Israel, I say, Shabbat Shalom. Enjoy your Sabbath. Have a blessed Sabbath and meditate in these scriptures daily. Any questions?
Shabbat Shalom, sis. Any questions? Well, with that, I say Shalom. Most High Christ bless.